marriage is God's idea, not man's. Uh, we find it uh, in the earliest chapters in the Bible. We find marriage in Genesis chapter 2. Um, God is the one who even makes man aware of his need for marriage. He's the one who says it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. God is the one who has Adam to name the animals. And in the naming of the animals makes him aware of his need. Uh, so God brings together the man and the woman for three basic purposes. For procreation, for sanctification, and for illustration. M marriage is about the cultural mandate. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth have dominion over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. This is only possible through procreation. So procreation is not just about having children. It's about having children and raising them in the discipline and instruction of the Lord so that this cultural mandate is fulfilled throughout the earth. Secondly, there's the issue of sanctification. Um, sanctification in that God gives us our sexuality and marriage is a place where that sexuality is expressed in a righteous context. It's also sanctification in the sense that this, this union and communion between a man and a woman is used by God in order to conform us to the very image of Christ. And thirdly, it's about illustration. It's about the picture of the relationship between Christ and his church. It's about that picture painted in Ephesians 5 of a man loving his wife and giving himself for her as Christ did the church and of a woman submitting to the headship of her husband as unto Christ because of the centrality of the gospel and because of the importance of this message and the picture that our marriage paints. So when we bear these things in mind, we recognize that marriage is not something that we have the right to tinker with. It is something that has been defined by God for thousands of years. And it's something for us to receive from God, not something for us to dictate.